Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Smug Mug Live. Thank you so much for joining me today, wherever you are in the world. This is episode 93, and it's another tips and tricks episode today, so thank you so much for joining for this. Uh, as course, as always, Smug Mug Live is brought to you by Smug Mug and Flickr. Hopefully you're here to learn about some of the cool things you can do with your incredible Smug Mug site, a site, you know, an account where you can share your images with the world, have an incredible photo website to share those images. You have incredibly robust storage in the cloud with our unlimited photo storage and, of course, e-commerce solution as well if you're looking for an incredible place to sell your images to your clients. But also please check out what we do over at flickr.com. If you're looking to be part of an incredible photo community, then please check out everything we do at Flickr. Of course, it would be great to have some interaction with you today during the show. So uh, get in the chat window here live and give yourself a little shout out. Let me know what part of the world you're joining me from. And if you have any questions during this episode, then please post them in the chat. Start your question with the word question, that way I will be able to find it as we go through uh, this uh, next little episode. Hi Mike, thank you for joining us. Mike has joined us from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, thank you for giving yourself a shout out. Uh, please feel free to get in that chat window and say hi. It's always nice to have this uh, be a two-way conversation. Uh, if you're new to Smug Mug Live... Thank you so much for joining us. You have a lot of catching up to do. This is episode 93. You can find all the previous episodes of the show right here on YouTube. I have a dedicated playlist called Tips and Tricks Episodes where you can see all the episodes we've done covering uh, tips and tricks on your Smug Mug site. And of course, we have our uh, incredible uh, guest appearances here on the show. So if you're looking to be motivated, inspired and educated, then check out all the previous episodes we've had with some incredible guests. Hi, James. James is joining us from Canyon Lake in California. Hope it's a beautiful day in California. And uh, yeah, so a lot of catching up to do if you are new to the show. If you've been here before, like James, I know you've been a, a great follower of Smug Mug Live, then you've probably seen me going through lots of uh, tips and tricks on customizing this website. This is our demo website, AMG Demo. This is a site that I use to demonstrate all the cool features that we can do here uh, on your Smug Mug site. Um, We've done a lot on that site already over the last few weeks. Uh, you know, we've customized the home page. We've added uh, a home screen video, uh, which you know, full screen video looping in the background of this home page. We've added lots of content blocks. We've added uh, navigation section. Uh, we've added about me pages and portfolio pages. The last few weeks, we've uh, you know sort of focused on building out this client area where clients can come and find their images based on what type of client they are coming to your website. Uh, and last week we looked at how uh, using folders and galleries, you can go into these galleries and customize them so that you can have um, a kind of dedicated gallery to individual clients and adding all sorts of content to that. Now, since the last episode, I've had quite a few of you reach out to me with some suggestions on what to cover today. Thank you so much for doing that. I always appreciate uh, people uh, making suggestions of what they'd like to learn here on the show. But several of you reached out to me specifically asking if I could go through all the various content blocks that you can use to customize your site. We've, we've spent some time adding a few content blocks here and there, but there is a whole list of content blocks that you can use to customize your site. And some people are like, you know, Alistair, could you just give us a little run through of, of kind of what they all do and how you could use them? Now, if you've watched this show before, you know I could spend an hour just talking about one content block, but I will attempt uh, in the next 30 minutes to kind of run through uh, all the content blocks, give you a, a kind of overview of what they all do and how you might use them, uh, and throw in some examples uh, along the way as well. Hi, Moro, good to see you back. Join us from Slovenia. Um, there is always something from other people's questions. Yeah, hopefully you're learning uh, from the things that interest you, but hopefully other people asking questions, um, you know, is, is educational to everybody who's watching. So yeah, please get the questions in there. But as I said, let's go back to my demo site. 
and hopefully you will be familiar with the fact that to customize your site, uh, you go to this top right hand section of the site where it says customize. Uh, and when you click on that customization window, you get taken into our customizer, which uh, by default is here on the right hand side of the page. Clicking the little uh, arrow at the top, I could flip it to the left if I wanted to uh, you know, focus and, and watch what it's doing to the, the right hand side of my screen. But I will keep myself on uh, the left hand side of the page today and keep the content, uh, the customizer here on the right so that we, I don't uh, cover any of it with my my picture in picture here. Um, you'll be familiar with me talking about this area at the top. This is the location pane. This tells you what part of your website you are currently customizing. At the moment I clicked on the customizer while I was on the home page, so it tells me up there that I'm customizing the home page. Um, and again, in previous episodes, just to recap, we went through adding content blocks, we've went through um, changing the theme and customizing themes, the layout, the look of your site. We've looked at the background tab where we've added this um, looping video currently um, on the background, but also looking at uh, slideshows and still images as the background. And in previous episodes, we've also looked at the layout, how you can control the size and dimensions of your uh, pages and whether you can make it responsive to the different sizes of screens that people are looking at. But to answer some people's questions today, I'm really going to focus on this content tab. This is where you can add content blocks, as we call them, to your site. And if you think of content blocks really as the kind of building blocks of your site, a content block can be on its own, uh, a single block on the screen and take up the whole width of the screen. Or a bit like Legos, it can be uh, beside another block or it can be above and below another site, uh, another content block. Um, so you can really build up all these uh, pieces of content on your site to, to work together. Uh, hi, Diana. Thank you for, for joining us all the way from Kentucky today. Good to see you here on the show. Um, so let's look at this uh, content uh, tab here on on this uh, demo site. And the first thing you'll see under the content tab is uh, a little uh, area that tells you what content blocks are already being used on this page. So on the home page, I already have a spacer and you'll see as I hover over them, we highlight on the home page, we highlight it in blue, the actual content blocks that are on the page. So I have a spacer at the top, which I'm using to to push my um, my logo down into the middle of the page. I have my logo content block itself. I have a menu, a navigation menu content block, and right down at the bottom, my social icons content block. So that little area there uh, just tells you what content blocks you're already using. And on some pages, you might have a lot of content blocks and you'll have that whole list down there. Uh, so really useful little piece there. And straight from, from here, I could actually click on uh, the little tool icons, the setting icons, and automatically open the settings for that particular content block. But I'm not going to do that today. What I really want to focus on today is this add content block section. Um, and as I say, people have requested that I give you a little rundown of what all these uh, various uh, categories of content block do and uh, give you a kind of run insight into all the various ones that we have. The first category is known as, we call it galleries. And if you click the little plus icon, it'll show you the available content blocks that are in there. If I zoom in, you'll see that we have four content blocks in there. Uh, one's called galleries, one's called folders, one's called folders, pages, folders, galleries, and pages, and one's just called pages. Um, this allows you to add the content that you already have stored on your site to the page. Now, if I uh, was to go to the organizer, hopefully you'll be familiar with the, the, the concept of having a folder, which could have other folders in it, or having uh, a gallery. A gallery is where all your images live, and a page, which is a page of your website. So I could actually add any of those things to my page. So let's, uh, for example, if I click on a gallery, the gallery's content block, and I just drag it onto this page, 
again, just to recap, remember you're going to see these arrows on the content block that you're currently hovering over. And like I said, it's like building blocks. You could either put it above, below, or to the right or left of that content block that you're hovering over. So if I wanted some galleries just below my logo, I would click on the down, I would hover over that down arrow and it will add that content block below my logo. And what it's automatically doing, it's automatically showing all the galleries that I have stored. It's the galleries content block. So by adding that, I can show a whole group of galleries in that content block. And of course, clicking on the little tool icon, I can customize how it looks, uh, the size of the, 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 the thumbnails. I can also change which galleries it shows. So I could go in here and just choose a certain amount of galleries, click on the gallery, choose galleries, and it'll take me to the picker. And then I could just pick three galleries and those would be the only ones that would show. So the galleries content block is just a way of adding galleries to your site. So I'm going to remove that uh, for the moment. Uh, let's see, did that work? There we go. Um, so uh, I actually removed, managed to remove the, the menu content block there as well, but never mind. Um, so that's galleries. Uh, folders does exactly what galleries does, except this time, instead of showing galleries, it will show all the folders that I have on my site. And at the moment, you'll see here, I have three folders in my organizer. I have my client galleries, I have a folder called archive, and a folder called event favorites. Of course, again, going to the settings, I can change uh, how these galleries look. I can change the size of them. I can um, obviously change which galleries, again, I show. Again, I could go choose uh, specific galleries. I only have, uh, sorry, specific folders. I only have three folders. Um, so galleries content block, just a way of adding uh, gallery, sorry, folders content blocks, just a way of adding folders that you already have stored in your organizer onto the page. And then I think the next one, self-explanatory pages, would add thumbnails of the pages that you wanted to add to the page. And then the last one in here, folders, galleries, and pages, would give you a content block that would show you all of that. So if I drag that one on to the page, you will see that not only does it show uh, the folders, it shows the galleries, and it also shows you the pages of my website. So you could use this as a great way on a page to let people navigate through your website just by using one of those four, uh, con four content blocks. A great example of that is the work that we've done over the last few weeks. Now, unfortunately, I just deleted the navigation menu. Let me just add that back in there quickly. Um, I'm gonna have to rebuild that, unfortunately. But um, if we... Um, yeah, should not have deleted that menu. But anyway, the, uh, we'll, we'll work through that. If uh, Let's continue with looking at some uh, content blocks. So back into Customizer here. And the next one down is Photos. Very, very self-explanatory. Photos um, lets me um, do things with the photos that I have stored on the site. And under the photos cat category, I have the, the ability to add a single photograph. Uh, example of that would be in the um, my about page um, where, um, let's see, I can't revert back there. Let me go back in here and rebuild this menu very quickly because I really uh, am not going to be able to navigate my site without it. Um, so this is, this is the... Let's let's skip forward a little bit is what we'll do is we'll go to this navigation tab. And one of the best parts about the navigation uh, section is this menu content block, which I've already added here. This is how you can build a navigation menu on your on your site. And what I want to do is customize this uh, to help people find their way through my website. So like any content block, when you drop it on the page, the content block opens and you can have 
control over the look and the settings of it. So at the moment it's a horizontal bar. Uh, I want to align it so that the text is in the middle. You can see it's moved here under my logo. Um, and then the interesting tab is this one that's called links. And this is where you can add the links that you want to point to certain pages on your site. So let me delete these ones. I want the home page. I'm going to add one that's called uh, portfolio. Uh, let's spell that a little nicer. So portfolio, and then it's going to link to a page that I choose. And we've already made these pages previously. You can see there's a page here called portfolio. So I click done. That now links to that and it's already showing here on my menu bar. Let's add another one, which uh, let's call this about me. A very popular type of page to have on your website. Again, I, I want to choose the page. So it's the page I choose and I now go change pick the, the page, uh, I'm going to link that one to my about page, about me page, back to create another link. And this one was called client galleries. So my clients can go uh, find their galleries. Again, it's a page that I've customized in previous weeks. It's uh, this one here called client galleries. Hit done. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the only ones I need for this little demo. So there we have that little menu back. So that is the menu content block. And if I hit done and I hit publish, that menu is, uh, is back uh, on my page and I can change the size and font of that. But if I click on client galleries, this is, takes us to a page that we customized, as I say, over the last few weeks. And here we see three different folders that people can choose uh, from my page. And this is using the folders content block. I've dragged the folders content block onto the page. I've customized it to show my wedding clients, my portrait clients, and my commercial clients. And if someone clicks on that folder, then it takes you to the folders that are within that folder. And I have my weddings sorted by year. Click on that folder, it takes you to, to the galleries page. Now, um, let's go back to the customizer. Gradually working our way through all these various content blocks. Um, I mentioned uh, the photos uh, section here where you can add a single photo. You can add multiple photos. Uh, obviously, you can pick lots of photos from a, a page. So, again, let's add uh, some photos here below my menu. Um, I could either get all those photos from a single gallery or I can get it from my entire site and just choose all the different photos I want. I could make it work by keywords. So if I uh, keyword my images, I could say just show all the images that have the keyword homepage. And that way I know those pictures. If I tag a picture with homepage, it's gonna show here in this little photo section on my homepage. Uh, or we can go uh, by popular and recent photos that you've uploaded. But let's just go to photos I choose. And then I go choose the photos. And because it's the multiple photos content block, uh, I can choose uh, as many photos as I want. So let's just go in here, pick uh, four images. And those four photos are now added to that content block. You can see them down here just behind me. And again, within the settings of each content block, you can um, choose all the different things you want to do with uh, the look and the feel of those images. Let's make them collage landscape so that we see the full image. Let's make them nice and large. Uh, so there you go. Those images are now showing up in that content block. That's the multiple photos content block. And what else do we have in there? We have a slideshow uh, content block. So we've spoke about in the past having a slideshow playing in the background of your entire uh, homepage. Um, but this is a different slideshow to that. If we go to my homepage, you'll see that I have a, a video playing in the background and it fills the whole page of my site. Uh, that's under this background tab. And under that background tab, I could add a slideshow to fill my entire uh, background. The slideshow content block is different because it's a slideshow that is contained within the page. 
So it doesn't fill the whole page and it, it's a content block that you have control over. So if I wanted to add a slideshow to my home page, I just drag in the, the slideshow content block and then again, all the settings, I tell it what I want it to do. Um, I can choose a gallery that all the images will play in a slideshow. So let's choose Seascapes. I hit done. It's now going to show a slideshow that features all the images um, that um, are contained within that gallery that I just chose. And then I have some control over the height, the aspect, uh, the aspect ratio of the slideshow itself um, and what, how it fills the page. And if I click done, you'll see that uh, if I hit publish, I now have a slideshow that's playing not as the entire background of my page, but it's showing as just a content block within the, the page itself. And again, I could customize the look, the feel, the size. It could have other content blocks beside it. It could be, uh, you know, some text beside it. There are a lot of things you can do with the slideshow content block, um, which it's like embedding a slideshow within a page rather than it being the entire background. So a great little, um, the uh, great little uh, slideshow tool there. Um, I'm laughing. Some of you are having a, a fun little chat there in the window about uh, where you're from. Um, I've got Sandy joining us. Hi, Sandy. Thank you for joining us. Finally joining a live episode. So glad that you could make it. Um, I'm watching from Michigan. So you're very welcome here uh, to the show. Thank you for giving yourself a shout out. And uh, yeah, yes, go blue. I'm assuming that's uh, football related maybe or some kind of... Uh, Michigan colours, so uh, I hope I don't ca cause too much uh, conversation by showing that on the page. Um, right, back to the content blocks. Um, let's uh, remove that slideshow so the page is a little bit cleaner. And let's continue with the photos uh, content blocks. And the last one in there is called Carousel. And Carousel is a really interesting one. It's where it plays... Um, plays the photographs in a strip format that rotates and plays like a carousel. Um, and to demonstrate that, I actually have one here on uh, my About Me page. So if I publish that and I go to my About Me page, I was demonstrating this to someone earlier. And at the top of my About Me page, I've actually added this carousel uh, to the page. Uh, and I've set it so that it auto plays and that it always puts the picture in the middle. Um, and like any content block, you can, uh, you know, customize the speed of the, tr you know, the, the transition to the next photograph. And because it's a content block, you can control the size uh, of that carousel. And I think a carousel is, you know, a really nice way to give a really clean, simple um, carousel type slideshow to your page. Um, so this, this is something I added earlier today when I was uh, demoing with someone. And on this page, I have a single photo content block and I have a text content block which we'll probably come to soon. So uh, Carousel, it's a great content block to use uh, to let people see your your images in a really cool fashion. Uh, right, let's move on to navigation section. The navigation section again has uh, some cool uh, content blocks in there. The menu content block, you've just seen me very quickly utilize that. Let me grab a quick drink. Utilizing the menu content block to build uh, a menu on my site so that people can navigate to my site. And again, lots and lots of settings within that content block to, you know, one, add all the links that you need, but also position it. It can be horizontal, as you see it here. It could be vertical. It could be on the left, right hand side of your page. Um, lots of cool things. You can also um, uh, have um, links um, pop out from the site. Uh, so like accordion out from underneath each other. And a great, it's so simple to do this. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. If I wanted uh, to click on portfolio and then have a drop down, uh, like an accordion drop down of the links underneath portfolio, 
All I have to do is create a new link. Zoom back out a little bit here. Uh, just call this a demo link. And it will point to, uh, let's just make it go to my contact form for uh, simplicity here. And this demo link, in order for it to, to pop out underneath when someone hovers over my portfolio link, all I have to do is drag it underneath and then ever so slightly drag it in. Let me zoom in there. And can you see how I've just dragged it in? Any uh, indented links like this will pop out from under portfolio. Really cool little feature um, on the menu uh, link. Now, it's not going to let me place that one because for some reason it's... Uh, I haven't got my contact form set up right. So let's just choose a page uh, just for demonstration purposes. And now if I publish that... And if things worked correctly, if I hover over portfolio, there you go, it pops out. And I could have a whole list, a uh, cooking accordion list, as we call it, of things that pop out from a menu. Cool little tip and trick there on uh, menu content block. Let's continue back to the navigation section. Uh, another content block we have is a breadcrumb. Uh, if you're not familiar with the breadcrumb, it's a trail that lets you find your way back uh, to various places on your site. Um, if we add one to a page, then at the top of the page, you'll see a little home icon and you'll see the breadcrumb of all the various pages that you've been in. The best way to demonstrate that is probably not on the home page. So let's go to my client galleries. In fact, let me see if it's already set up on client galleries. Yes, there you go. So this up here at the top, this is a breadcrumb and it's a content block. So you can place it wherever you want. You can um, move it around and customize it. Most people typically have it at the top of the page. Uh, if I clicked on the home icon, it would take me to my home page. But this is the, the trail that you have gone on. This is the links that you have gone through to get to this particular page. So we've clicked on the client galleries link and it's taken us here to the wedding clients. Uh, and if I was to click on the client galleries wording, it would take me back to the, the client galleries page. Uh, so it's um, a great way to, to let people navigate uh, their site. That's just a breadcrumb. Uh, let me just go to this question that's come in from Mike, because this might be relevant. Mike says, on the drop down after making the selection, will it open to a new tab? Uh, I, with the links, you have control. Let me just go show you that. So back to the site. If I go to customize and I go to this menu and I customize it, let's go to the links. And if we go here, you can see for every link that you make, let me see if I can zoom in, you have the option here for it to open to a new tab or not. So if you if you want to take someone off your website, maybe you're linking to, uh, I don't know, a, a blog or you're linking to another website or something like that, then yes, if you turn that on, then when they click on it, your website will stay open in a tab and this one will open in a new tab. So yes, answer to you, Mike, is yes. Uh, another little tip, a little extra one there for you. Right, where were we? Navigation, hopefully that explains what a breadcrumb is. A button uh, is is kind of what it says, a content black. If you drag the button onto your site, you can um, just create a little button. I'm actually hiding it with my picture here. So it's created this little button over on the left. Um, let's align it in the center of the page. Um, and it's just a button that if you press it, it does something. Um, and what it, 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 it's a link. It's, it's, it's very much like the, the menu link. You can send it to a photo. You can send it to a page. You can send it uh, to a custom URL. Uh, there's all sorts of places you can send it. And if someone clicks on that button, then that's where it goes to. It's just really a, a design element for your website. That is a button. Featured events. Uh, previously uh, on the show, I'm looking at my notes here. When did we talk about events? Um, yeah, episodes 87 and 88, we spoke about the event tool where you can build a custom landing page 
a unique landing page just for your customers that has just their photographs from that event, uh, well, you could feature some of those events in a content block um, and have that on any page you want. Um, moving on, last week we spoke uh, very briefly about videos and how to add video to your site. Um, and there's three ways you can add video, three different content blocks. We have videos that you have uploaded into your SmugMug account, into your organizer. There's a native video stored in your SmugMug account. You can embed a video from YouTube and you could uh, embed a video from Vimeo. So three great ways to do that. Um, and last week I demonstrated on just adding uh, the video content block. The video I'm actually using is the, the video for the background of this homepage. Very simple, you drag the content block on. Uh, you can give it a title if you wish, which will show above the video. And then you just click the video icon and pick the video that you want to, to show. Um, the, uh, yeah, very, very simple way to, to do that. Uh, I'm not going to put the video in here because I already have the video on that page. Um, YouTube one, I think, again, I showed that last week. Just you drop in the the link to the YouTube video that you want to embed. You just paste that in there and it will play that YouTube video right there on your page. Um, so these are all kind of embedding videos rather than the, the, the full page video that you see here on the home page. The video content blocks are a way of... Um, embedding videos that you have stored somewhere else on your site. Very cool feature, great way to market yourself if you've recorded videos of yourself, um, maybe talking about what you do, the type of photography you are. Something I see a lot of our customers doing is recording videos, um, talking about the products they sell, showcasing the products they sell, embedding that on a page, um, kind of explaining to your customers what they can buy and how they can buy it. It's a great way to, to market to your customers. The next uh, content block uh, section is design elements. Uh, content blocks that you use to help the customization and layout of your site. I have a logo content block here. Very much uh, like a single photo, if you like. You've uploaded your logo as a, a PNG file um, and you can just embed that logo there. But it's nice to... Um, you know, have it specifically showing up as a logo so that you know what it is. Separator is just a little uh, design element. It's a separator line. Let me drag it on here. And I'm going to put a separator between my logo and my menu. So I could either put it above the menu or I could put it below my logo. And uh, it might be quite hard to see. Can I zoom in a little bit? Can you see it's just put that thin separator line just between those two? Um, and what's sometimes cool is if you add another separator below that one, then oh, I wanted to move that one. Let's I want it below my menu. There you go. By adding those those two separator lines, it just highlights the menu a little bit more, makes it look like it has a little border around it. Cool little feature. Um, and then a spacer is a very useful feature to make a content block be where you want it to be on your site. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, logo, rather than being at the top of the page, what I've done is I've bumped it down into the middle of my homepage just by adding the separator content block above it. So there's nothing in a separator content block. There's no content in it. You don't see anything. Uh, but what you can do is control the width of it and the height of it in order to move things around in your page. Really cool feature. Um, and you can just add uh, an amount of pixels. So if I add 200 pixels, you'll see that it's bumped. It's maybe hard to tell, but it's bumped that logo down just a little bit into the page. So those are just design elements that you can use to help people um, view your site better, move things around, position things. Uh, but I do like the separator uh, is a good way to use that. Um, text. Text is obviously very, very important on your site. Uh, let me just publish what we've done here and head over to my About page. If I go to my About Me page, you'll see we have um, that beautiful carousel at the top. Um, not such a beautiful photo on the left. And then uh, a text content block here. And a text content block you can just drag beside or above and below any other uh, content block. And then when you customize it, 
uh, let's go into the customizer here. Um, when you click on or add uh, a text content block, you're taken to a text editor. This is where you can format the text that you want to enter. Um, I just got some lorem ipsum here. So you can change the size, you can change the, 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 the layout of that. You can, you know, format the text, uh, whichever way you want to do that. Uh, and of course, with any of these content blocks, you can have as many of them on the page as you want. I've just got one content block here with text in it, but you could have numerous uh, content uh, blocks of text on your page, uh, as many as you need. So uh, text one is fairly self-explanatory. Social um, section now, a lot of social section content blocks here uh, to look at. One is your profile content block. Now, when you set up your SmugMug account in your account settings, let me uh, come out of the customizer just to show you where you'll find this. Um, if you go to the top right, I might be hiding it by my uh, Smug Mug logo, Smug Mug Live logo here, but up here in the top, very top right section of your Smug Mug account, you will find your account settings. And if you click on that, down here you will have your account settings uh, tab. So um, I'm actually going to, I'm logged in differently from this site. So I'm going to go to uh, the account sections over here. Um, this is where you'll see all the different uh, back-end stuff of your website. You know, the, the your subscription, your billing details, uh, notifications, your stats, which way you create price lists. Uh, lots of things that we've covered on previous episodes. You'll find them in your account settings. But another section you have to, to work on is what's called your profile. So if you hit edit my profile, you can go in here and create your own profile. And what it'll do is it will give you uh, the ability to put your name, uh, your email address, a description about yourself and some photographs. And you can add those uh, to your site as a content block. So you could just drag that content block onto the site and it'll show you a little profile icon. It'll show your bio. Um, let's see if it will work on this site. I don't know if I have my own profile set up on this demo site, but let's see. So if I drag that content block in, drop on the page there, there you go. So if I hide myself, you'll see it shows a little preview of uh, the little profile picture I've uploaded, it shows my name, it would show a, a background cover image if I had uploaded one, it would show some uh, bio if I had written bio about myself, but it also shows some links to my social accounts which I've added there. So um, it's, it's almost like having your about me page as a content block, uh, which again you can then embed and place on your site wherever you desire. Social icons can content block very self-explanatory. We have a great example of it here on the home page. It's where you show those links to all your other various uh, social accounts, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Flickr, um, all those things that you need. Um, a share button, uh, again, very self-explanatory. It allows people to share your website to their social accounts. So you'll, you'll be familiar with this if I add it uh, to the site here. Uh, again, I'll just hide myself here. It's showing um, a like button for Facebook so that you can like it through to um, your Facebook account, the person who's viewing your site. If someone comes to your site, they can share it on their Facebook account and to Twitter as well. So it allow, allows people to uh, talk about you, if you like, uh, about the work that you do. Those are share icons and you can add them uh, at a gallery level so that people could share a gallery that they're looking at uh, to Facebook. And what it would do on Facebook is show a little thumbnail and have a link back to that page. And just a caveat, that won't work if that gallery is password protected. The link won't work there. Right, what are we, where have we got to? I know there's a lot, we're almost there, we're almost there. Uh, the next one is a comments content block. So if you wanted people to be able to leave comments uh, similar to what you would see on a blog, so you could create a page, add the comments uh, content block to it, um, and people could come in and enter a comment um, and uh, you can start a conversational thread right there on the page. And again, by using some um, 
spacing and some design and some margins, you can make that uh, just a little section on the page. Uh, very, very straightforward uh, comment section. Feed content block, that is where you would add uh, the feed from maybe a blog or uh, some other website or account that you have where it could show um, pre, you know, like the last 10 pages from your blog as a content block. Um, I don't have a link to show that with today. Um, and then I'm definitely going to get you to ignore this one, the Google Plus badge. Google Plus is no longer with us. Google have uh, ceased Google Plus. So um, in a future update to our site, we will be deleting that content block for sure. Then the next uh, section is uh, the discovery section. This is where people, you can create content blocks that allow people to find things on your site. Um, you can create a simple search box. Uh, in fact, let me add that to a gallery because sometimes it's, um, it's not the type of thing you might have on your homepage, although you might want people to be able to search from your homepage. But let's go to, uh, let's go to my portfolio and on my portfolio page, I might want to add a search uh, feature at the top so that people can search for my photographs. So let's go back to the content blocks um, in discovery. I grab the search box and I'm just going to drop that to the top of my page. Now, uh, when I hit done and hit publish, someone could come to that page and search for mountains let's see and let's hope we have something relating to mountains so i have one image one image that has either the word mountain tagged uh, as the title the caption or a keyword uh, so it's a great way for people to to find it let's uh, let's see if i have anything uh there you go tagged with the word nikon or Nikon, or Nikon, depending on where you are in the world. Um, so these images uh, were probably all taken on a Nikon camera and therefore have the keyword or the metadata of Nikon. So that search function uh, lets me find that. Uh, little question popped in my ear there. Moral question, can you review comments before they're published? No, unfortunately you cannot review questions they they are live um so it's not like a kind of forum uh it's more like social media you know uh, or uh, uh you know that kind of feature when someone posts something then it's uh it's going to be it's going to be live i'm afraid um all right let's go back to the site and uh try and get through this as quickly as i can um discovery uh yeah sandy's just said i'm gonna to have to start using keywords you definitely are going to have to start using keywords because what, something I think is really cool, um, we have not just the search box, but we also have this keyword cloud. And keyword cloud can be a bit of fun on your website. Uh, and what it does is it creates this master list of all the keywords that you have on your site. So someone, you could just put that as a content block where someone could come and see all and say, oh, I want to see everything that has the content, the keyword wedding. Uh, but one of the cool features I like is um, not only can it be a list, but I can make it a cloud. And if I click done, you'll see what it does is it adds uh, all those keywords as a cloud to the site. Um, and then you have this kind of little fun cloud of keywords on your site that you people can scroll through and have a little bit of fun. And of course, if you click on one of them, um, I'm looking at the wrong screen, so I can't see what I'm doing. If I click on Nikon, then again, it's going to show me uh, all those pictures that had the keyword Nikon. So uh, a little bit of fun there uh, with the keyword cloud. Right, back into the customizer. Where have we got to? Uh, and we are finished with, uh, Sandy thinks that's cool. Yeah, it is. It's a little bit of fun. Uh, that one. So that is discovery. And then the last one is a map uh, content block. And if you were eagle eyes earlier, you may have seen me scroll down here where I've actually already added uh, a map content block. Uh, a map content block is going to rely on some of your images having GPS data. Uh, if you don't have any photos that have GPS data, the, the map content block isn't going to be a lot of help, uh, but what it will do is um, show you all the images on that map 
um, as a uh, as a little uh, target on a, on a map. So all those photographs, and if I hover or click on um, one of those target points, you can see the photograph that was taken in that point. Uh, this is my preview image, which if I zoom in a little bit and scroll around the map, you'll see it was actually taken in Puerto Rico, of all places, uh, which is pretty cool. And if you click on that, it'll actually take you to that image. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty cool little fun feature, especially if you are, um, you know, if you do wildlife or if you do landscapes and you want people to be able to see uh, where your images were taken. And, and of course, if you capture GPS information, um, then the map can be a lot of fun and very useful for your visitors to your site. All right, we've got two more to go because the very bottom one here that says Smug Mug, that's a, an engineering feature, so you won't see that one. Um, the second to last is services here. You can add a Google Calendar to your site, just embedding a Google Calendar that you might own uh, to let people see what um, you know availability you have in your calendar. If you have a business calendar, you can add that there, uh, assuming it's a Google Calendar. Um, Google Translate, this is a fun one. If I added Google Translate to this page, uh, uh, let's just publish that and hit done and hit publish. Now I could give the ability for someone to come to my site uh, and see my site in whatever language they wish it to be. So if I click German, uh, it's going to change everything on my site uh, into German. It's not going to change the keywords because uh, they are um, not, the Google Translate feature can't reach those keywords, but certainly any of the text um, that I have on my page, uh, it's going to change. It's not going to change this uh, Lorem Ipsum uh, particularly well because it won't recognize uh, those words as any language. Uh, but yeah, great little feature if you have a lot of multinational uh, customers coming to your site, then uh, Translate will change all the text that you have on your site. Right, I'm getting down to the last few. Uh, back in services, we have a wonderful Wufu form. Uh, now, Wufu forms, when did we cover that? Contact forms, we covered back way back in episode 69. Uh, if you want to see how to add uh, a, a contact form to your page using our plugin with Wufu, then go check out episode 69. But dragging that content block onto your page allows you to add something like this, a content block that adds a contact form to your page. And you using Wufu, you can customize this forum to look uh, and be however you want it to be and capture the certain uh, information that you need to capture uh, from the contacts you have on your page. Really a uh, great way to build a contact form with Wufu. So go check out that, um, that opportunity we have there. I think you can have up to three uh, free, um, uh, three, three, <laughs> three free contact forms with Wufu. Most of us only need one, but uh, you can use multiple contact forms. Um, and then the very last section we haven't covered is the HTML and CSS sections. This is where you can really get technical with your SmugMug site and code your site. So rather than doing what we've done for, for months now, for many, many weeks of dragging content blocks onto your site and not needing to know how to code your website, which is one of the biggest selling features of SmugMug, so I'll drag and drop. However, if you wanted your site to do something specific, if you wanted to code it yourself, then you could drag uh, a CSS or HTML content block onto your site. Many, many of our customers do, and there's a lot of information out there about uh, code. Uh, you drag that onto your site. Of course, it's not going to show on your site. You won't see this content block. Um, but then what it gives is a, you know, a, an editor um, there to put source code in uh, and change whatever you can change using code. Now, I'm not a coder, uh, so I'm not the person to uh, demonstrate some of the things you can do with that content block. But, but what I'll maybe try and do is get one of my colleagues to come and join me to show you just some of the things you can do with uh, 
the coding on your site. It's something we've we've built so many content blocks. All these content blocks that I've showed you today, and is is really to try and allow you to do all the things you want to do on your site without needing to code. Hopefully that HTML, CSS code content block is something you'll never have to use or never have a desire to use, uh, but it's there. There's a lot of people uh, able and capable of going into their site or even in, uh, you know hiring someone to go into their site and code it. Um, but uh, yeah, that is a list of all the content blocks. Um, let's see questions we have. Question from John. Hi, John. Says, Can I use map coordinates to show a particular location? Um, I'm not sure. I think the map content block purely relies on the GPS data that you have on your map on, uh, on in the photograph. So that in, it takes that GPS data and will show that image on the map. Um, so if you wanted to show a particular location, then um, the only way to enter those coordinates is to have them on an image and upload that image. Um, and then the map is used to find images from that location that you have available publicly on your site. Um, of course, any images that you mark have uh, in unlisted galleries or private galleries will not show on that map. You won't be able to find them. But uh, yeah, the, 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 the information in that the, the map uses is all coming from the GPS data that's stored in the JPEG file that you've uploaded to the site. Uh, James, what's this you're saying? Just have to ask Alistair, do you have to wait for happy hour after the show or do you enjoy a nice glass of Glenlivet 18 at 5? Just wondering. Um, I, I yeah I should do a happy hour after the show and have some of you join me for a glass. Uh, you know Glenlivet is a nice uh, whiskey. I guess due to me being Scottish, then you make that assumption that I might uh, have a little whiskey now and again. Um, but yeah, during during the show and during workout work hours, it's uh, purely water, and you have to take my word for that. So. But thank you for asking. Yeah, hopefully one of these days uh, we get to meet up somewhere in the world and, and have a little drink together. Uh, Sandy, I'm probably going to skip HTML. Yeah, look, I, I skip it. I don't want to use HTML. It's, you know, it's why we have Smug Mug built the way we, we have it. We want to try and allow, you know, photographers, we want to empower photographers to be in control of their own uh, photo website. We don't want you to be beholden to, you know, designers and other people to to change the simplest thing on your site. So by using the customizer, using the content blocks, then you can hopefully do uh, almost everything you need to do uh, to have a beautiful website with amazing looking photographs and, you know, incredible storage and e-commerce solution to let people buy those images. So. That was a run through of all the content blocks. It took a little bit longer than I had anticipated. I thought I could do that in about half an hour. It took me about 40 minutes to go through all those. Um, thank you so much for, to those of you who have stuck around uh, and uh, looked at all those content blocks with me. If you haven't already, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification. The bell notification is really important and make sure that you're notified whenever I go live or whenever we release any more content here on the YouTube channel. Um, so please subscribe. It really helps us, um, you know, get uh, in front of people and let, you know, YouTube, the more likes we have and the more subscribers we like, uh, the more YouTube feeds us to our audience. So thanks for doing that. If you enjoyed the episode, give me a thumbs up, hit that like button, uh, show your appreciation because I certainly appreciate you joining me for uh, the last uh, 50 odd minutes to to hear about all the things we have here at Smug Mug. Um, that's the last one for the for the week. I do, I sh for those that you don't know, I live stream typically twice a week. Tuesdays is typically the tips and tricks episode followed by uh, a guest on Thursday. Um, no guest this week, so we had two tips and tricks episodes. Join me next Tuesday for another tips and tricks episodes. And if you have any requests for anything you'd like me to cover, then you know leave them here in the comments or reach out to me if you can find me on social at, at Alistair Jolly. Um, and if um, next Thursday we're going to be joined, I 
by an incredible photographer called Chris Dalberdeen, uh, who uh, is an aerial photographer, flies a little trike uh, from New Mexico. If you're on this YouTube channel, hopefully you'll have seen um, our One Day One Artist film featuring Chris Dalberdeen that we released just uh, a week ago. Um, if you haven't seen it, as soon as I'm finished, go check out Chris Dalberdeen's video here on uh, the YouTube channel and then join us next Thursday for a little chat with him where we look a little bit closer at the aerial photography that he does. For now, wherever you are in the world, stay safe, be kind, look after each other and I will see you back here next time for another episode of Smug Mug Live. But for now, take care. Bye everybody. Bye.